Hey everyone, welcome back. This is DHTV and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some of the best tips and tricks you can use with your iPhone 5, 5S or 5C using iOS 7. A lot of these tips will work with other devices that use iOS 7 but we'll be focusing on these three for this video. Anyway guys, I hope you can share this video with your friends because I put a lot of work into it to make sure I could find some awesome tips that'll save you money, save you data and help you get things done a lot quicker. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna take a look at is actually in the settings application, and it's gonna allow you to change the size of your text. So in the general tab, you'll see a section called text size. If we tap on that, you'll see there's a bar at the bottom. Now, if you swipe this to the right, it's gonna make the text larger. If you swipe to the left, it's gonna make the text smaller. And this is all dependent on how you wanna look at the text on your iPhone. Now, something that gets overlooked within this is actually a setting in the accessibility setting here. There's a section that actually is called bold text and if you swipe to turn that on hit continue it'll restart your iPhone with bold text now that the iPhone's turned back on you can definitely see the text is completely bolded and this transfers over to pretty much everything including your apps on your home screen Next up is the voice of Siri. You can actually change Siri's voice and language from a female to a male voice. So let's take a listen. Siri, what is my name? You're asking me so there you have it, Siri sounds like a male now. So you can actually do this in the settings tab here. If you go to general and then Siri, you can change the languages here from a variety of different languages. I'm sticking with Canadian English for my area, but you can see under voice gender here, you can select between male and female and it'll change depending on what you choose. Next up is probably the most popular feature that Apple implemented into iOS 7 and that is the control center. Now swiping from the bottom to the top will bring up this feature and I'm sure a lot of you know about it, but it's pretty important that you understand this is where you're gonna access your AirPlay now, whereas in iOS 6, double tapping the home button and swiping to the right would bring up that feature. You'll also be able to access your music features and your quick settings at the top. Next up, we're gonna take a look at a controversial feature here, the parallax effect. And a lot of people don't like this because it does ruin some custom backgrounds. And this is the effect where the apps are sort of hovering over the background and move as you tilt and turn your phone. Well, there is a way to turn this off or at least limit it so that it's not a bother. And that's in the settings application. We'll go down to general and then to accessibility. We'll scroll down just to where it says reduce motion. Now, if we set that to on, it's gonna turn that parallax effect off pretty much and you won't even notice it as you tilt and turn your phone everything staying in one place now along with the release of iOS 7 if you go into the settings application and into the sound section you're gonna notice a whole new set of sounds and tones that you can access and listen to now if you're a fan of the old tones you're not gonna lose them they're actually still available you just need to find the classic section here there's one for the ringtones and then one for the alert tones if you click on that you'll be able to access all the tones from iOS 6 Another feature that Apple implemented with iOS 7 is the background app refresh feature. And basically this allows applications to refresh the content in the background and use location services. And this way when you access them, they'll already be refreshed. You won't have to wait for them to load. Now this runs using your Wi-Fi or cellular network. You can access this in the background app refresh section of the settings app. And if you open that up, you can see that I have mine off. And this is because this feature does drain the battery. And you have to take into consideration, especially if you do select certain apps that use this feature like Google Maps that the location services is also going to be running and this means that the GPS is also going to be on so it's a good chance that these things are going to drain your battery a lot quicker than if you just have this setting off so turning it off is as simple as just tapping there and then hitting disable background app refresh another quick feature with iOS 7 is the access of spotlight search and no it's not missing you just need to swipe from the middle down now and it'll bring up the new spotlight search rather than a full page you can still search for pretty much anything you want and it'll pop up as it did before but one thing a lot of people don't do is actually use the setting of spotlight search so in general in your settings application if you select spotlight search here you can actually select the specific things you want spotlight to search for if you don't want to have your podcasts or notes pop up then you can do that as well or if you want to have everything you can just select them all another setting you want to take into consideration is the automatic updates through itunes and applications so in the settings 
iTunes app here, we're gonna go to the iTunes and App Store section. From here, we're gonna scroll down to where it says music apps and updates. And as you can see that I got a couple of them enabled, the updates and the apps. And basically this is gonna allow applications to update through my Wi-Fi connection in the background at various times during the day automatically. Now, if you don't have a good Wi-Fi plan, like you are running low on your bandwidth or anything like that, you might wanna turn these off. You can also, if you have a good cellular data plan, enable it so that even if you're on the go outside of your Wi-Fi network, it can still download the updates through your cellular plan. For most people, this should be off, and even for some, this could be off as well. This way you can control when and where you update your apps. Now, continuing on the app trend here, we're gonna go into the App Store. Now, a cool feature implemented into the App Store is a wish list feature. Now, this is great because if you see that there are some apps here that are quite expensive and you just don't have the money for them, or you're thinking of purchasing these for your children or anything like that, but you just don't have the money or don't want to purchase them yet, you can open the app and at the top here there's an icon. If you tap on that it'll bring up some settings here and one of them is the add to wish list setting. So if we tap on that it'll go ahead and save it in our wish list. Now you can access that by just tapping on the top right here and you can take a look at all the different applications that are in your wish list. Now personally I think this is a great idea because a lot of the time when apps are popular they stay at a high price and as a lot of people purchase them if you wait it out a little bit the price goes down and sometimes even becomes free. So if you keep a list of the apps that you don't have the money to purchase yet or just want to see if they'll go down in price in the wishlist folder here, you may be able to save a lot of money on your apps. Another basic feature with iOS 7 is also a very overlooked feature, and that's the ability to use pages within your folders. Now, as you can see, I've got nine applications in this folder here, but actually, if I swipe to the left, I've got a second page with two applications in it. Now, you can fill up multiple pages with applications, and also you can swipe between them just by going left and right. It's a great feature, especially if you have a lot of applications and you wanna group them and keep things organized. Now, one of the most beneficial features of iOS 7 is the ability to restrict certain applications from connecting to your cellular data and only allow them to connect via your Wi-Fi network. So in your cellular settings section here in the settings app, if you scroll down to where it says use cellular data for, you'll see all the different applications you have connected via your cellular data plan. Now, if you have a low plan like 500 megabytes a month, it's a good idea to check up on this and see which applications are actually burning your data the most. If you use applications like Netflix, Netflix and YouTube and things that are using streaming services, maybe even Pandora, you might want to turn these off if you're using your data and only have them connect via your Wi-Fi network. Now, the way you do this is you simply come to this section here and you just swipe them and turn them off so they only connect when they're connected to your Wi-Fi. The next feature is another very basic one and it involves our calendar app here. So we'll open that up and by default, you'll see it like this or you may even see it in this section or even by day. But if you wanna get a list view of all the different events you have going on, all you have to do is hit the little search button at the top here and you can see a whole list of all the different things you have going on over the next few months. Next up is a long awaited feature that Apple finally implemented into iOS and this involves our messaging app here. So we'll open that up and you can see I've got a message here with my dad, a few messages and you can see that it shows the timeline for a few of them but not all of them. But now you can actually swipe to the left and you can see a full timeline of all the different messages and when they were sent. Next up we have a new feature with iOS 7 which involves the camera app here and actually the live filters. So if we tap on the bottom right here, it'll bring up all the filters you can use with the camera app. But what's interesting about this is you can actually see a live image of the photo you're about to take with each one of the filters implemented. So all you have to do is simply tap the one you like and take your picture. Next up is another basic feature, and this one involves the multitask feature here. Before, you would have to hold on the app and then hit the X to close it. This time around, all you have to do is swipe upwards, and you can even swipe upwards with two or three applications. Anyway, guys, that is it for this round of tips and tricks with iOS 7 using the iPhone 5, 5S, or 5C. More to come in the near future, so definitely subscribe if you're interested in checking out more of these videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, hit that like button down below. It helps me out a lot. Also, let me know in the comments if you have any questions i respond to every comment that comes my way and if you want to check out more videos like this one there's a link in the description and you can click the links right beside me it'll take you to those videos thanks for watching i will see you in the next one